Hi guys, welcome back to another video. We have a big high roof Ford Transit here today. It's 2017. And what are we having? Man is having a couple of issues with his car and what's happening actually to his car, van, whatever we want to call it. What's happening is intermittently when he puts in the key, he is getting an immobilizer fault that comes up here on the dash. Now, what I'm hoping and thinking is I have a scan tool plugged into it, the Autel is plugged in already, but you can see it there now. Immobilizer. Come on, it's gonna go. It's actually gone off there now. When I cycle on and off the key, it has gone off at this point in time. Immobilizer active, active check handbook. I have the clutch pressed with my leg here and it will not start. Okay, immobilizer active still coming up and on here. Now I've done a code scan and I'm seeing can communication faults, but I'm going to try and keep this thing simple and not pay any too much attention to it. To the, the CAN bus faults, what I'm looking at, when I lock it, we can get that audible noise again of our horn giving a, a beep and I have no flash of my indicators, either on the front or the side or, on the, or the rear. When I lock, beep. Now, I'm just going to walk around. This might be silly um, for some of you, and it's probably simple. When I lock, my back door was locked. My side doors up here, sorry, were locked. There's only a little fast video. And when I ambled around on the passenger side sliding door, it was unlocked. Now, I have it open for a reason at this point, and that is only just so you get the audible noise, okay? And you could see that the actual the flash when I'm unlocking it. And if I close the door, at this point, it now locks without the beep, but the beep I had, okay? Now, I think I've done it twice. It actually un it's unlocking the front doors on the first press and the second press unlocks the back doors. Now, again, I've, I've done this on one or two videos and I'm just showing these little three contact pins here and on the door on the opposite side, if you can see them. These are just little push pins or contact pins. Basically, when you lock the door or shut the door, we have a position sensor in here. Um, we're going to have a ground anyway that's going to be shared by the two um, other two pins. Basically, one of them is for a position sensor if the doors are open or closed. And the other one then is to actually lock, send power down one circuit to lock and are unlocked. Now, I'm not saying, I don't know, I haven't back probed with scopes or any of that kind of stuff. All on this I'm doing is I've just looked at them. They look fairly good. The pins look fairly good. And I've given them a little sand down. And once I've given them a sand down, only silly little bit of 400 sandpaper. And I've done, as I said, there are a couple of videos on the likes of this crack. Once I had that done, lo and behold, my actual doors locks. Okay? Now, it wasn't locking prior. I think I have to do it a second time. Remember? It wasn't locking prior, but after doing that little bit of emery paper down here, or sandpaper, it is in theory locked. Now, what am, I, what am I actually showing and what's so interesting about this video? There is no real interesting bit in it. But while I was locking and unlocking on a couple of occasions, what I was doing and seeing was that it stopped locking and unlocking, okay? And then I went off and I had a little look to see, could I change a battery in this key? Now, if your key looks like that, that little forward symbol on the back, there's a rechargeable battery in that, that in theory should get charged when it's in the car or an ignition switch, and it should come back to life. But like any battery, like a car battery, they get charged and they can over time fail. The batteries in these cannot be replaced. If it's kind of a, a blue color in here, bigger, the back does pop off it, but on this key, on a 17 Ford Transit, it cannot be replaced, all right? There's one thing. And as I said, when I'm locking and unlocking and locking and unlocking, what happens at a point, it decides to stop getting a signal from my key. Where's my little tester? Here is, this is only just a little infrared thing that when I press my buttons, okay, can you see? You can. There we go. Did you hear the lock stopped? 
I have a signal there. Locking, unlock, nothing, 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 nothing. I am getting a little light here, so it's probably strong enough, the battery in it, to actually illuminate this. But once I've used the lock and the unlock button a couple of times, the battery itself in the key is going flat. Now, I have been looking at, sorry about that there, I have been looking at door lock positions and stuff, and that actual PID there, you can see the second one down, is for our side door. All right, that's me pressing a button again. So we can see at this point in time, our door position is changing. And this is left, rear left is stating, but it is the actual side door on the left hand side. So by cleaning these pins, I have in theory fixed this issue that the door is locking or unlocking or whatever the heck is happening here. But he does have a, an issue with his key that after three or four presses he does the battery goes flat inter internally in this and it's not strong enough or send out a strong enough signal to actually maybe be picked up by the car again we look at it unlock it actually does it there lock gone okay got it that time nothing 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 okay there she's gone again on a couple of presses and again i'm carrying and holding the key close up to the actual car itself or the vehicle where it's going to be probably picking up a uh, radio frequency signal from this thing now what i'm just saying is that we need a key to fix this so this is a, a quite a simple point out of something where the clean of the pins on this fixes the actual door not locking on the side stops the beeping of the horn and i'm suggesting that once that door is locked oh, once the door is locking on the other side and we're not getting any audible audible beep from our horn that the immobilizer issue I have to get my leg in apologies yep back in <laughs> I'm believing that this immobilizer active problem is happening due to the battery being flat in that now the area that sits around there does in theory on cars send a little voltage out that this thing will pick up a the voltage from that will it will it, make the actual chip inside in this come to life but i'm suggesting and saying to this man that it's the key and the battery not doing its job in this we'll get a new key change it around i think he has a second one we might get the second key and even try it and just see what way we go okay well if the other one is working locking and unlocking i'm suggesting that that is what our problem is it's inside in this our fault is all right now i don't know the makeup of the key and i don't know if the actual battery inside it does power a chip but i'm suggesting it's going to be the key at this point, and I'm going to ignore our CAN bus for us. We'll change the key, get the second key here, and our new key, and see what happens at that point, okay? Okay, guys, another little small little thing I'm just going to do before I kind of... I spoke to this man, and his mad might be coming along to get... Alan McKeith has to do a clone a key, or whatever they call, call it with that thing. What I'm showing here is just a little thing for checking the actual aerial in here to make sure that's actually working. It is an in intermittent problem, so I'm suggesting that we have no problem with the aerial. What I was doing there was just hanging the key on over. Now, when I put in the key, there's a little LED sitting just there, and I'm going to turn our ignition... Am I going in fair enough? There we go. I'm going to turn my, um, my key into the ignition on position and when I see this doing three or four blips it gives a pulse which should activate the um, little what do we call it, call, it, call it the immobilizer chip inside in the key and I saw there we had immobilizer message if I give it a flick again when it gives one pulse that means it actually got a response back from that chip and then I'm suggesting that we're going to have no yeah no problem in starting it at this point so Again, only food for thought, thought for lads. I got this, as I said, there on eBay. It's only very, very cheap. It takes about a week or so for it to come. But if I go in, ignition on, right there, three flashes. Immobilizer active. I'll turn it off again. Back on again. Three or four flashes. You saw them there. Immobilizer active. So when I get one flash, okay, off. Nope. 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 Well, anyway, when I get the one flash, we're trying to hold the camera. Yeah, it's not doing it there. Okay. Come on, baby. 
Maybe I should be just holding it there. That'd be easier. Now, every time we get three or four flashes, basically the aerial is getting no response back from that key. So again, I'm suggesting that, as I said there, the key, can't can't recreate it there now anyway, so we don't really, nope. And I don't want to break anything there. No. Okay, let me just look. Proof again in the pudding, we're seeing an issue here. The aerial works, sends the pulse out to the actual key. Key is not responding, and at that stage then, it gives it a couple of pulses to try and wake up or make the actual chip react or give it back a signal. I'm, again, confirming. Man has only one key. He doesn't have a second key, or so he says. I'm saying right now, 100%, this is going to be the key-related issue. If Alan from KeyFast can get us a key, get it cloned, I will have a follow-up, and I'll show you the new key. Fit it in, and this thing fixed, okay? Key. 100% here. We'll get a key and we'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, guys. It's the next day and I'm back on this um, Ford Transit. Why is it the next day? We've Alan from KeyFast, actually, or KeyFast. It actually wasn't... On this occasion, it wasn't Alan. He's out in Croatia. So on this occasion, there was another chap called Nicky. I would touch base with Nicky and I said we wanted another key set up. And he said, okay. And here is our new key that he has cloned from... This one, it, he actually said that he didn't think there was too much wrong with that other than the battery going flat and that in theory, the car should start. The car should start anyway, whether electronically it's not happy with the doors locking or anything, it should start anyway to a, from the aerial electrifying or waking up that actual chip inside it. So he didn't believe there was a whole lot wrong with the key causing the problem. What he's actually saying was he believed there was an issue with the actual aerial that sat around the ignition switch. Now, my little green little thing didn't show that. I thought that was actually doing its job. There was two or three pulses coming from my little LED. He said at points he was getting no wake up on the actual aerial at all. So, what he's done, fair play to him. They touched base with me and they said this aerial is, he believes, faulty. I contacted my dealers, four dealers, which is Sheridan's. And Michael and Sheridan said they had one on the shelf. And he said, Nicky said, I'll pop over and pick it up. So, I actually paid him. Nikki popped over, picked it up, and then fitted Arian. Our transceiver, as they call it. There's a part number for it. So that actually sits in around the ignition switch in here, okay? Actually, that part in there actually looks nice and shiny. Um, I don't have the old part, and it's lashing rain, and Nikki has gone off. But So I have the old part somewhere, at some stage. Right now, I don't have it to hand. We did replace the key because the battery was getting weak. So we have the key done. We have this... Aerial or transceiver as they call it done and I got it from these guys Sheridan's but just to show Okay locked Unlocked The second press of the button we can actually see the hazard lights flashing Okay, it opened all of them there now, but what it's doing and the customer told me was it locks the front doors on one press and then on two presses, it unlocks all that. The beep of the horn, as you can see, is gone because we're cleaning up our little pins in the door. And yeah, that we're saying that that is it. Okay, key in. I'm just gonna try and get in. A little bit tight because the door is closed because of, okay. Up and running. He said he's at the start and the stop and maybe 40 or 50 times. And that is with the new key. Let me just try it with the the old one. Starting on both of them. So whether right or wrong, or good or bad, the man now, as he kind of requested this morning, he said, I need a second key anyway. I'd like to have one. So right now he has a second key. Going to recommend that he uses the new one. Old one can be thrown in a shelf or something. We have this aerial replaced as well. If there's any doubt with it. But the problem is now resolved. So. I don't know. Was it handy? Was it not? I'm a, not a big man on uh, mobilizers. I've said this before. But Alan and Keyfast in Waterford City. And our Nikki now at this point in time. Did do this. Any of this kind of stuff for me. So we're up and running. Immobilizer fault. Central locking fault. And... A no start issue on a 2017 Ford Transit um, high roof front wheel drive, if that's any good to anyone. Anyway, guys, please like and subscribe if any of my hints and tips are any good to you. And I'll talk to you all next cartoon. Peter Kennedy, signing out. See you later, guys.